Welcome back guys, I'm Dan Levinson and I'm joined by Jake Skirchek and we will be commentating the top eights here at Brooklyn, New York for today's Premier Challenge. Between Christina Bacino, also known as The Wolf, and Rob Samad. Also known as Megachar10. Um, Marab is an aged up senior, just got into Masters and already cut the first event of Masters. Yep. So he's starting to show strong already. Very. Um, and Christina, she's a, a, more of like an old school player. Uh, she mostly played back in 2011. She got second at the New Jersey uh, Regionals and followed up with a top 16 at U.S. Nationals being knocked, by, knocked out by none other than Mac Boyle. So... I'm expecting a really good match between both players. You know, she did come back out of the blue, made top cut at the first premier challenge for the season, so I'm expecting a lot from her. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this match. Marab also got a top, no, he got second in nationals, actually, this year, and top eight last year. Uh, made Worlds for Day 2 seniors twice, uh, qualifying through the pr uh, regular season twice. So Mirab's pretty consistent. Hasn't had a good showing at Worlds, but for the rest of the season, he won, also won a regional, actually. So Mirab's done a lot in his senior career, so hopefully he can translate over to Masters. Yeah, I mean, the person I'm sitting right next to has done a lot of that. <laughs> so as soon as he transitioned right over, did really good for his first year in Masters, so I expect nothing less from Mirab. Well, if you want to consider that good, then okay. <laughs> Yeah. We're all set here, and we are going to be starting momentarily between both players. Uh, we'll be going through their team sheets. We have, I guess, uh, Tina on the top of your screen with a team of Weavile, Ronzong, Salamence, Xerneas, Kyogre, and Raichu, while Marab is running a team of Raichu, Gengar, Salamence, Ronzong, Kyogre, and Eveltal. So I think... Um this matchup is pretty interesting because you know we see Marab has an evil tall, uh, Christina has the Xerneas, so obviously you got to think, okay, well I have Xer Christina has to think I have Xerneas, I have a good matchup right now, but uh, with also Kyogre's you can be very offensive with them because you don't have to worry about a uh, Primal Groudon switch in, Desolate Land goes up and then up, oh, don't have a Water Attack, but that, not this time. Whoops, missing that mic. Thank you, Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> but looks like we are jumping right into this now. Uh, we vow. Kyogre being led by Christina while Marab is leading with Kyogre and Gengar. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is a good lead for Christina because she has the dark type knockoff that can hit the Gengar and she can also fake out the Kyogre if she wants to. And um, Marab obviously can't really do a whole lot but he can go for maybe a Will-O-Wisp onto the Weavile or uh, after a Protect when R both of them can go for water attacks. And we also see that Marab's uh, Kyogre is slower than Christina's. Yeah, as the primal reversion is happening right now, and, you know, Weavile is mostly, I mean, the typical set is usually knock off, an ice move, fake out. I've seen some running faint every yeah. n once in a while, but, and even the items as well, you know, we have Life Orb and Focus Sash as being one of the popular of the two. Yeah, we can also see uh, Fling with King's Rock. That's also a, that's also a, vi a viable option. Uh, I think that um, both these Pokemon, just of uh, uh, Kyogre's actually, they can go for water attacks, or maybe if uh, one of them has thunder, they can try and pull that off, but they also have to be careful. Um, I think both of them have Raichu, though, so they, yeah. they, they have to be careful of a Raichu switch in or something along those lines. Yeah, you know, you have to be really careful when you're playing this turn one because you could just catch the momentum and you just steamroll, and that's one of the things you always have to consider when you're going through these first turn, trying to always be playing safe in a way. Yeah. We're going to be seeing Gengar go ahead and Mega Evolve, going to have that ability of Shadow Tag. It's going to go for a Protect, though, so mm -hmm. no, nothing happening for it this turn. While uh, Weavile is going to go for a Protect as well, probably not wanting to get... the Kyogre. Okay. Yeah, Kyogre is Protect. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, well, Faker happening, Origin Pulse happening, everything's going to Protect, so it's a dead turn. So, Mirab, you know, he's learning a little bit of what Christina is using. Yeah. Um, I like the Double Protect, but I also don't, because the Double Protect... Uh, well, seems like a good position. I blocked. You blocked a lot of damage, but now you're open to two, just you're open to attacks. And Christina knows that, so she can definitely just really pound Marab hard here with 
I school I school crash knock off and use a water move with Kyogre. So Marab kind of left himself open, but then again, Marab really needed to keep the damage off from the fake out turn. Yeah, he, he does have the shadow tag as well. So Christina's kind of trapped there, and she's just gonna have to maneuver her way around this uh, t next turn. Right. Um, Gengar can also go for Will O Wisp on the Weavile, so really, really weaken. Uh, this is her Twitter. Weevil, uh, Weavile. Oh really? Okay. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna be seeing Marab switch out his Gengar now into a Bronzong. Weavile going for that knockoff though, super effective <laughs> onto Bronzong. Great switch by her. Well, great prediction by her. While we see the Lumberry being revealed, her Life Orb being revealed, and Kyra going for that single target Origin Pulse. Wow. Okay, that was a great turn for Christina. She got, uh, she got the knock, uh, knockout onto Bronzong, on the switch in too. So, yeah, she, she so got a really free. Uh -oh. oh, we have a disconnection. Oh, looks Technical like. Difficulties. Oh, maybe the plug came off. Uh oh. No, it, that's a disconnection. Uh oh. One of them. One of them's getting a game loss. Yeah. Game loss. Well, we're finding out what's happening right now. If they can restart it or not. They okay. can't. I don't think it's, well, I no, think it's no. too late. Oh, really? It did get disconnected? And the game was tied. Oh, wow, it did get tied. Oh. Okay, so as you just saw, looks like someone's game card or something got. Oh, we're going to redo it? Redo? Oh. So let me just uh, let everybody know before we have any issues, because I know some people have problems with how things run. Both DS is disconnected. Since it was in turn one, I am allowing them to restart. I have asked them to start with the same leads, the same Mons, so that there's no issues. They've both agreed, and so we're going to continue with game one as soon as their DSs get, get ready. Um, I could not determine who disconnected at this point. It, they were both just both on the disconnect screen, so they both agreed, and I am allowing it as a TO. So keep going. Cool. Thanks for clarifying that, Jen. We'll be coming back to you shortly with the match as soon as they get going. But that was already a really interesting turn one, though. Both yeah. players get losing one of their Pokemon immediately. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Christina had a really nice um, knockoff there. Um, but I think Christina also learned that um, her Weavile is faster than Mirab's uh, Gengar. So she can really use that to her advantage. Uh, but making the team with Mirab, I did, I did actually help him with it. Um, I don't remember us using uh, different... Uh, Gengar spread. I thought we were actually max speed, but I guess not. We might, have ch we might have changed it before the tournament started. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he has a bit of a bulkier Gengar, I, I guess, because of the drop in speed. Yeah. But uh, overall, though, that was still a really interesting turn, and we'll be starting again momentarily once both players get get, get connected. They've asked, and I've answered it here, but I'm going to let you guys know they're doing same moves, too. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've agreed to that as well. So. Cool. All right. Okay. So, yeah, I... Uh, both players will be going with the same moves that they did before, but the only difference, though, is that one of them used Origin Pulse. So there's still that chance yeah. that it could miss or even yes. get a critical hit. So we'll play that out and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So but going over these teams, though, hmm, yeah. What can we infer from it? I think that, um, I think that Christina has the matchup just solely based on the same primals and the fact that uh, she has the restricted advantage with Reserius over Evil Tall. And Marab's really only way to deal with it is Gengar and Bronzong. And with Weavile, Christina can really uh, knock those two out pretty easily. So yeah. she's really capitalizing off uh, what her Weavile can do. Yep. And I really like that, too. Yeah, I mean, I guess the way she saw Marab's team, that knockoff was a pretty safe attack, regardless of if it went into an immune, such as Evetal. Mm -hmm. But everything else is either super effective or neutral. So why not just go for it? Exactly. Uh, we are going into the g batch, though, very quickly by both players. Yeah. So we saw a Gengar Kyogre and a Weavile Kyogre, right? Right. All right. So they're going to go with their same leads, obviously, from the disconnected game. And yeah, I don't know what else we what else to say about it because we have to wait till we yeah, get back we'll to it. Yeah, we'll go through this turn one pretty quickly. Uh, as we recall, Weavile goes for the knockoff on the switch in into Bronzong. Yeah. And I believe both Kyogre's just go for an origin pulse, right? Uh yes they did. But there was a double protect before that. That's so yeah, that's that's right. So I don't <laughs> So I don't know if they're gonna do a double protect turn first or what. Yeah. As far as I know, I th they're gonna keep it at the same position. 
as yep. uh, the kids can Thanks, Rajan. Yeah. First turn was uh, Protect, so yeah. nothing happening this turn, but following turn, we'll see that Gengar get knocked out. Yeah. No, the Bronze Song switched in. Yeah. So the Gengar's still yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. Following turn. Okay, okay. Yeah. I got you. I got yep. you. Okay. I got you. Huh. With the zero. Uh. <laughs> okay. So. Well, ooh, Brady Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I like that nickname. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Brady. But uh, so w when that gang, when that bronze line comes in, what do you, what do you think Rob's gonna switch into? Uh. Perhaps Eveltal. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could see Rob bringing both of his restricteds. Um, it's it's dangerous though because of the Weavile with knockoff, but knocking off Kyogre won't do a whole lot. Yeah, it depends on what Rob brought in the back, of, of course, obviously. Yep. Gengar. So oh, they're doing they're redoing the yeah, double protect. Everything is going so Gengar is going to protect here. Kyogre is going to protect as well. It totally looks like a Weavile protect. <laughs> 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 Weavile is going to go for the fake out, and we see the Origin Pulse. And okay. And now for that turn and two. <laughs> and for the, <laughs> the beautiful turn two that I almost screamed. Because <laughs> I was so surprised. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I was I thought I was <laughs> I really loved that turn. My favorite one to watch. Yeah, it was whenever you see a one hit yeah. KO, it's always a really good sign of that the match is progressing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know what to say now because yeah. they have to do their turns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there we go. Fingers gonna switch. Yeah. Bronze on gonna come I in. I think Mirage could have. Oh wait, no, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. It could. Be, I think it might be Evil Tall in the back. So we see Bronze on get knocked out. See all those items being revealed. Origin see pulse. some origin balls okay. happening, and now Marab just needs to connect his. Let's see. And uh, okay, All connect. he's so good. We have, we have the same situation. Okay. Awesome. We're back. Same position, same game board. Yep. I'm gonna expect Ivetol to come on Marab's right. side, and Christina. Who's Christina gonna bring in? Maybe Dialga? No, not Dialga. No, uh, Zernius. Oops. Yeah, there we go, Zernius. Uh, I could see Zernius coming in here from Christina. Um, she just has to be aware that, uh, that that Gengar, if she can't, if she brings it in at the wrong time, then that that Zernius is going down or getting taunted. So yep. she has to be really careful if she if she sends it out, and she has to have a plan for it. If she also brings in, if Mirab also brings in Gengar, so maybe it might not even be the best idea at all to bring Zernius right now. But I think after the Gengar go Gengar goes, I think it's safe to bring Zernius. Yeah, we'll see what both players decide to do here. Uh, Hmm. Both of them are running down to time too. Uh, yeah. Well, at least Marab is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Salamence. Well, from instead we're gonna okay. see Salamence from Christina, Gengar from Marab, and we get an update that Jeremy Rodriguez takes the win over Devon Singh. So we'll be seeing him in top four. Right. All right. So it's Gengar and Salamence. That was, those were those are the two in the back that we were trying to figure out. Yep. So I think in this position um which character was faster was it i think it was christina's i think so okay so yeah marab can't really ice beam here because his kyogre is kind of slow uh at least slower than christina's uh kyogre because of a double edge coming so that's it's kind of like a weird it's a weird game because you know there's one play that can get the spreads out but it's not gonna happen and i'm pretty sure this gengar does not have hidden power ice <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them have been carrying the whole Hidden Power Water to go with their Kyogre. Yeah. Salmons is going to Mega Evolve, while Marab is going to go for a Sludge Bomb onto Christina's uh, Kyogre and gets the Poison. So that's going to whittle away its HP very little, while Christina goes for a Tailwind onto her Salamence. So now her Pokemon are going to be able to outspeed Marab's for the next four turns. Christina going to go for the Origin Pulse. Should be enough to take out that G oh. Mega Gengar. So, oh, that's critical hit. hit. Okay, so it's going to be... Going down as Ice Beam is going to connect onto Christina's elements. They're literally trading KOs yeah. here. Uh, 
I see uh, why she went for Tailwind, though. Uh, Christina, that is. I think Christina went for Tailwind because she thought the Kyogre might protect and uh, was expecting the protect from Kyogre and Gengar to do something else. So I like that play, but it really didn't work out for her. But she did get the KO onto the Gengar. So it did it did work out for her in a different way that she hoped. But now that the Xerneas is back in, I think it's safe to say that Christina has the advantage. Yeah, Christina is going to be able to, I would assume, go for a Geomancy here. As long as Yvette doesn't carry anything crazy. But usually it's just three dark moves and a protect. And she has the speed advantage. So, and we get another update. Chubba Cross takes the win over Michael Spinetta. And he'll be moving on to top four as well. So we have Jeremy and Chuppa both in top four right now. Um, so that's one of the first year masters gone. So yep, we're still waiting on uh, Anthony and Kazi. So that's gonna be another really strong match. Christina gonna go straight for the moon blast, but Kyogre is gonna be living it by a couple HP while she goes for an origin pulse that should take out Marab's Kyogre and leaves Ivetel with just a fraction of health. So it looks like Christina's gonna be taking this match. I don't see any way that Marab can take this back now. Yeah. Um, I think the way uh, Marab lost this one is because the tra the, tra the KO trades were just way more in Christina's favor than Marab's. He needed uh, he needed the Bronzong and the uh, Kyogre, not the Kyogre, the uh, Bronzong and Gengar to handle the Xerneas. And if there's no way to handle Xerneas with an evil tall team, you're going to lose the Xerneas. So... Uh, yep. Christina definitely got the better end of those trades, and just keeping Xerneas conserved till the end was a good was a good idea. Yeah, we see Rob go for the forfeit, and Christina is going to take this first game in a best of three series. What kind of adjustments do you think will be made for this next game? I think Rob is going to have to figure out a way, um, just be more conservative with his Pokemon, um, like not switching, like for example, not switching in the Bronzong to a knockoff, but like. There wasn't much he could do at that point. Like, so you could switch in the uh, evil tall in, but then your life bar gets knocked off. So it, you can't win. Really, you can't really win there. Yeah, we've all definitely causing problems for Marab. I mean, I'm looking at his team right now, and literally everything other than Evadel get can get knocked off, besides Kyogre, because you know primal orbs don't get knocked off. But we are jumping into this next game. Christina leading with Weavile and Kyogre again while Marab goes with Gengar and Kyogre again. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what you have to remember, um, Weavile is faster than the Gengar after Mega Evolving. So it's definitely an interesting, it's an interesting thing now. So maybe that, maybe Marab knowing that she knows that, he can make a different play based off of that. Like, there's just so, it's so confusing. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we are seeing both Kyogre's Primal Evolve, yeah. but I don't know. It, I mean, it's like I said before. Weevil has knockoff. It can knock out Gengar and anything else. But Marab has to remember he has Evetel, and he needs to be able to play around with that. But then we also have to remember about the Dark Aura, too, yeah. from Evetel, too. And that's just going to power yeah. Weevil up even more. Yeah, it's it's basically like there's – basically, it's kind of like Christina has five Mons because uh, the, the Dark Aura is helping Weevil out. And yeah. it's really pressuring Marab to keep it in the back. Exactly. Gengar, though, it's going to Mega Evolve and go for that Protect, while Kyogre also going for the Protect again. Possibly a knockoff and an Origin Pulse? No, she went for the Fake Out onto the Kyogre and Origin Pulse. So, dead turn here, but now Gengar is Mega Up, but he has to remember about switching here. Right. I think... Um so, now Mara so now Christina actually has an a knockoff play here again, but does... Uh, he switch into Evil Tall, or does Christina, in prediction of the knockoff again, does Marab predict the knockoff and um, stay in? You know, it's oh, oh, it's faster. Yeah. But now we do see Gengar is faster than the Weavil. Weavil goes for the knockoff onto the Gengar, taking it out. Oh wait, huh? Why did I think it was faster? Mm. I don't know why. Right. Oh, because it's sw okay, it's switched. All right, that's why I thought. Okay. Well. I'm Origin sorry. Pulse is happening. It's all right. <laughs> uh, Marab going to get hit there. Yep. Trying to try and go for it. Connect. Connects onto the Weavile again. So, I like this play more from Marab. Losing the Gengar is, I think, 
better than losing the Bronzong because now Bronzong can handle the Xerneas much better, th uh, much better, and now Marab has a free switch in. No, and in addition, now Marab can threaten the Xerneas now because he still has the Bronzong. So. Ooh, but Raichu. Yeah, we do see s Raichu though from Marab as Christina brings out her Salamence. Right. So, uh, one switch up Marab made was bringing Raichu. So uh, he either. Do you think he might have Evil Tall or Bronzong in the back? I mean, after what happened before, I th I still feel Evetal is still a better play because at least it could deal with Kyogre in a sense if it's carrying Snarl. Right. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it's it's already at low health, so, or uh, half health, excuse me. So I think Rob is just trying to whittle, whittle it down while all his other Pokemon take out uh, Pokemon with one-hit knockouts and just really big damage. Yeah. Christina going for that protect though. I think it's a good play because there's always that threatening fake out ice beam. So it makes protect. the most sense. But Kyogre gonna go for the protect as well. Raichu going for a fake out and Kyogre going followed with an ice beam. So um, so now it's just it's almost a repeat of turn one. Now that uh, Christina does leave herself open, but Christina does have the faster Pokemon. So it's Marab can't really capitalize off of that as much as Christina could have in on turn two. So uh, she can s uh, still, you know, go for uh, the attacks faster. But uh, will Marab take them and be able to KO back? Because Marab will be able to, to at least take out one of these Pokemon with either Origin Pulse, Volt Switch on a Kyogre, or Ice Beam and uh, Ice Beam on a, men a Salamence. So, well, Salamence gonna go straight for the Hyper Voice though. Does uh, about a good damage onto that. Raichu, as Raichu goes for a nuzzle onto Kyogre, so automatic 100% paralysis on there. Kyogre is going to be able to connect with the Argent Pulse, but misses onto the Raichu, so just going to see some chip damage onto Kyogre. It's going to be surviving with 42 HP. Ice Beam, though, is going to connect onto Salomon, so that will be a knockout. I think that Origin Pulse miss onto Raichu um, could matter a lot in the end, actually, because... Um, now I think that Raichu will take a Dazzling Gleam, or not take a Dazzling Gleam, he's taking an Origin Pulse from Christina's Kyogre. So he has two turns to nuzzle the Xerneas. So maybe Christina won't protect her Xerneas at all and just go straight for a Dazzling Gleam and, uh, what is it? Dazzling Gleam and Origin Pulse uh, to just take out both these Pokemon and get Evil Tall alone or Bronzong alone. Well, Raichu is gonna go for the nuzzle now. Xerneas is gonna get paralyzed as well I wonder if it's going to go for the Geomancy, though, or just go straight for the Dazzling Gleam. Oh, she does. She just go for the Dazzling Gleam. It's going to do good damage onto the Raichu, and Kyogre is going to follow it up with an Origin Pulse. Will it be enough, though? Yes, it is. Raichu is going to go down, and Marab will have Kyogre, and I will only assume it's his Legend, maybe? Yeah, there's e battle. It's going to come out now. Excuse me, I'm coughing. I don't um, know. I was gonna point it to your Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink it. I'll drink it after the set. <laughs> but uh, so it's not over for either player. But uh, you have. But Christina obviously does have the type advantage. If she can get off just a dazzling gleam, it'll. I think it'll actually win her the game. And Rob can only hit one of these Pokemon, I think, unless Rob has Snarl. So it all depends on what Rob decides to do with Evil Tall and which uh, Christina might protect or not. Yeah. So, Rob has to make the right read here. If if he doesn't, I think Christina has the set. Yeah, it all comes down to also paralysis here. Sucker Punch, though, is going to connect onto Kyogre. Kyogre will be going down, and it's all up to Xerneas here. It yep. needs to connect with that Dazzling Gleam. Origin Pulse, single target. So much damage onto Xerneas right now in the rain. Ooh. Dazzling Gleam is going to connect. Will it be enough for the Xernia for the Evetal? No, not enough. And it looks like Marab is going to take this next game. Yeah, Marab played this uh, game much better and much more smart because he knew which Pokemon he didn't really need as much as the others. Uh, the Origin Pulse on Raichu, um, that was that was that was a bit troublesome for Christina. But Marab had Marab had win uh, win a win condition whether or not that uh, Origin Pulse had hit or not. So uh, Marab, thankfully, getting that miss though, would had a really easier time winning. So he takes this game too. Yeah, I like the adjustment. Not bringing in the Bronzong, bringing in the Raichu. He was able to identify what he needed to. 
to take this game two. Yeah. Uh, game three. Uh, what do you think that Christina's going to do differently? Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, that was still a really solid game two, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if she kept with her lead. Marab is still kind of flexible. He could switch up his lead if he wanted to. He could. Um, what would Marab change his lead to is the question, though. Like, I think Kyogre is still a really good uh, yeah. lead. Uh, he could go with Raichu. He could go with... Raichu. Yeah. I could see him leading Raichu, like you said, or maybe Salamence. Uh, that puts on a lot of pressure of what uh, Christina's been leading both games, uh, getting the Intimidate, and maybe setting up Tailwind if he's lucky. So I think Rob has a lot of lead options, but uh, leading Gengar doesn't seem like a good idea with Le Levi Weavile leading twice. Yeah. I do want to see... Let's see. Does any player have anything really cool I mean Christina does have some cool stuff but I'm not sure if she would want to bring it in this game three but this is what all game threes are all about it's bringing everything that y whatever surprise you have left this is how you catch your opponent off guard yeah um, we could also see like some new tricks that we haven't even seen yet so it's r it's a really interesting game three because both these players identify their win cons uh, although uh, Christina she had a really easier game two, uh, game one than Marab, so you have to really think that Christina has a way better matchup and a better advantage going into game three. Yeah, and we are jumping into this game three now in this top eight series between Christina Bassino on the top beaver screen and Marab on the bottom. Christina leading with her Weavile and Kyogre again. I'm not surprised. That was a really strong lead these past two games. Marab going with the Gengar and Kyogre, so he still feels confident with this lead. I think that a re maybe a reason that a Marab is not leading with his Salamence or his Raichu because um, Weavile could have faint. So if he if he predicts wrong on, on the faint play, then he loses Salamence without it getting to do anything at all. Yeah. So I can see why he's not making that play, but um, it's not working for him bringing uh, Weavile and uh, uh, not Gengar, not Weavile, Gengar. So. I think that Rob could have tried to change his lead up into something else, but Gengar is putting him at a real disadvantage. <laughs> All right. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another knockoff happening here and possibly a protect. There's really no point for Gengar to be switching here because both Pokemon either is just going to boost it with the Dark Aura if he went with it again or super effective. Gengar is going to go for the Mega Evolve as... Protec is going to happen on its side. Nothing's going to happen into it this turn. And Kyogre going for Protect again. So we'll just be seeing another lead again. Fake out onto the Kyogre, Origin Pulse. So Same yeah. play every, f yep. every game so Same far. Same game, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's, not a, it's not a bad play by any means, but you have to, yeah, it's, it just comes down to like a mind game. So like, usually it's like, oh, he did this last game so I'm gonna do this this game so it's like or maybe just like they're gonna predict me to do something different because I did this last game it's just it's just a weird mind game when the same plays keep happening over and over yeah you usually expect some kind of switch or something to change but sometimes both players just go for the same thing and there's nothing wrong with that too <laughs> Weavile is gonna go for the knockoff and she predicts <laughs> it goes for it knocks out the Bronzong wow Kai you're gonna go for the origin pulse again most likely. Let's I see. Maybe there we go. System. Well, Christina's going to go first with her Origin Pulse. Right. That's going to do some chunk damage, there, chip damage there. While Marab's Kyogre is going to go for another Origin Pulse, and it's going to connect. So Weavile is going to go down here. We have yet to have one Origin Pulse miss out of the whole set. Yeah. That's really surprising. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, this is just the same This is the same turns. I'm really, I'm, I'm shocked that they've actually let this happen. <laughs> but... Uh, Salamence is going to come in, and We'll Gengar. see. Yep, Mega Gengar coming back in. Maybe Salamence will go for a Tailwind? Or I guess just going Hyper Voice is still a pretty safe play, though. I think that Christina actually al almost wins on Tailwind because uh, she can Origin Pulse, put the pressure on the Gengar, get it to a range or actually KO it, where Origin Pulse, it's like Origin Pulse KO or KO range, and then Brings Xerneas in, get the Geomancy off, KO the Gengar, and went off of that. And the Grunzlong is gone, so there's no way it can get Gyroballed. 
Yep. So I think Christina is in a really good position if he goes for a, a tailwind here. Well, Salmon's going to go and Mega Evolve here. Salmon is going to go for a protect as we see the Gengar. Yeah, Gengar going to go for the Sludge Bomb. Connects onto that Kyogre. No poison, though. And Origin Pulse is going to connect on both Marab's Pokemon. Should be enough to take out his Gengar. Yep. Yeah. And Gengar will go down. Rob, will he hit this? Oh, oh he went beam. for the Ice Beam instead. Uh, all right. If Evo Hall is in the... Yeah, okay. I think it's I think it's pretty much over. Yeah. Well, uh, if Christina just gets this Tailwind off, I think she wins just because she doesn't have to send you, uh, set up a Geomancy. She already has a faster Kyogre, so all she needs to do is protect and Tailwind, let the Salamence go down, and then that's the end. It's close, if not game. Yeah. Um, Marab oh. has very limited outs, so. Yeah, Marab going for the protect on his Kyogre. Sucker Punch, though, gonna target Christina's Kyogre. Critical hit. And Salamence is going to go for the. Yeah, there's some life orb recoil. There we go, Hyper, Hyper Voice. Voice. Okay. okay. Hyper Voice going to connect onto of Edel. Should take it uh, a little bit under half there, as Xerneas will likely be coming in now. Yeah. I still like Christina's play. Um, going for Hyper Voice just gets it into any fairy move KO range. So she's just, she's not losing anything from going, um, not for going for her Tailwind. And now she gets a guaranteed knockout with the fairy move and she yeah. can double edge the Kyogre for game. Yeah, I mean, even just to save Dazzling Gleam Hyper Voice, it's, it's safe for her too if she wants yeah. to just do that. So looks like Christina very likely will be taking this set and moving on into the semifinals. Ooh. Hyper Voice is going to connect onto the Kyogre. Get and Xerneas is going to go for the Dazzling Gleam. Okay. Kyogre going down, and now it's Evetel versus the world. Yep. Uh, I think that was a well-played set by both players. Yeah. Um, I think just based on Christina's matchup, she really just, <laughs> she really had it uh, in her grasp because Xerneas has put on so much pressure in the back, and leading with Weavile really, really made it harder for Marab to actually uh, get his game plan through. Yeah. So that's going to cause Christina to move on to top four. Yep, congratulations to Christina, showing those yeah. old veteran players that we can they, still they, come back here. They still got it. <laughs> so really excited for this next game. I think we're just about all done here. Yeah. That was the last one. Cool. Oh, okay. okay. So and we'll be back with top four soon. Yeah. We'll be coming back with your top four matches. And I 